chair's about to be fired, that's fine. <laughs> Um, let's say there's one more uh, sort of quite specific question about the loan charge. This is from Steve Packham, uh, who represents a group about them. Now, the loan charge appears to be um, a, a, a tax on freelance workers for arrangements that were made in uh, before 2017, but they're being taxed retrospectively on these payments, uh, causing people considerable financial difficulties. Um, so, are, are we all um, up to speed with the loan charge? Okay, so I wonder if you could, uh, so Steve would like to know, can you commit to stopping this retrospective charge uh, and end retrospective taxation? Christine? Oh, absolutely. I think anything where you go back retrospectively retrospectively is unfair and unjust and uh, it, it, we've seen similar sorts of things with the Windrush uh, you know low hanging fruit this is these are people who work hard for our country they're doctors that are uh, working freelance in the NHS they're people that uh, support our local authorities and they are being hammered so I just think that we draw a line we got new rules and let's move on from that. Martin? Yes, I agree entirely. And um, looking at the loan charge, it was introduced in 2017. I mean, I agree there was a case there for plugging a, a, a loophole that had been used for many years. But to go back that far and to suddenly give people a huge tax bill then that, that's been accumulated over decades with interest told they have to sort it out by 2020, and some of them don't even know this is coming, you know, that there have already, unfortunately, been some suicides. Uh, and it, it's just not the way, you know, by all means, plug loopholes going forward, but there's an extremely important principle here. So the, um, I know the uh, Liberal Democrat um, MP in Eastbourne, Stephen Lloyd, has been working on this as part of a big all-party group with, I think, you know, well over 100 MPs from across the political spectrum, and we have pledged in our manifesto to scrap the loan charge, um, whilst also pledging to be tough going forward on tax avoidance schemes and to close those loopholes, but it should not be done retrospectively, so I agree entirely. Jonathan? I can think of circumstances where I would favour retroactive taxation, particularly on the big tech companies who haven't been paying their bills. Um, and other large corporations, but where people have done something in good faith within what they believe to be the guidelines and were the guidelines at the time, then to change the rules and then go after them afterwards is, is against the fundamental pr principles of justice. Mm -hmm. So, in my previous career, I was offered the loan charge as a concept. What happens is you set up an offshore company uh, and then it ends up, uh, the, you have a loan structure and you never repay the loan and you can end up in a situation of paying 18% tax rather than, say, 45% tax. And do you know what? I said no, because I think I'm supposed to pay all the tax that's due. So what I find extraordinary is often the Conservative Party are the ones accused of sort of sticking up for people that dodge tax and don't pay their fair share. There are 3% of people in this structure that were in public service, um, the public sector, the rest of them largely work in financial services, work in IT. The reason why the bills are so big is because there is so much tax that has been avoided. And I can tell you this from having worked inside the Treasury. So this was a tax loophole. Everybody should know what tax they are supposed to pay, uh, and therefore they took a risk. It's not retroactive. The courts have not found it to be that case. If, if they want to, they can pay the loan back, which would effectively be the same as the tax amount that's due. So just take a step back as well. We've all talked about all these billions that we're going to pledge to this, that, and the other. This is three billion pounds. Not only is it three billion pounds that will have to come from something else or your taxes, you that actually do pay the correct taxes that's due, you will be allowing the bulk of those people to get away with quite a lot of money. And you also have to bear in mind, whilst they were not paying the correct level of tax, they were able to invest in other assets which have appreciated in value as well. So to me, it's a classic example. We can make tough decisions, and that's what getting elected is all about. You can't please absolutely everybody. Or you can just promise everybody everything, because you're never going to be the one that has to justify why it can't be paid no. for tomorrow. I don't... Jonathan? 
I don't think this was a great scheme. I think they should have been paying their taxes. They were doing it within the law, and you guys have had nine years to close that loophole. And Labour, before you had another, heaven knows, back since 97 to close that loophole. If you're not going to close the, close the loophole and people take advantage of it, what are you going to do? I mean, it, either you're within the law or not. The law is not a moral thing, is it? It's like not down to us, oh, well, it's up to you to be good and pay your tax. You either pay your tax because that's what your legal obligation is or not. That is the acid test. So why didn't you act? We, well, that's our thing. We did act. We closed that loophole and then said you can either repay the loan or this amount is actually due. And again, I come back to it. If this was found to be unfair, the courts would have intervened and found it to be unfair. They haven't done so. I believe what we're doing is right. And it's for reasons like that that we have closed the tax gap, which means the amount of money that should be paid by tax versus the amount we actually recover. It's never been narrower. And it's important that we clamp down on people that, quite frankly, just take advantage so that they can pay less tax than you do. I think I'm, ast I, I, I'm actually astonished by that. Mm. Uh, you know, given some of the tax avoidance schemes for these large companies and, and uh, millionaires and how much tax they actually pay. These, the, the yes, but we all know, don't we, that, that, pe that some of the larger companies and some of our biggest earners actually get away with huge tax avoidance. And here you're hitting small business people, you know, often working on their own. And, and go back retrospectively is just unjust. Yes, it's not it, it, it is. Well, Martin, it, Martin. I, I think with respect to who you do need to bear in mind as well, it's not just repaying the low, it's the interest going back you know, in some cases, decades. So it's, and it, it certainly isn't the case that these were all fat cats. These were used, you know, and promoted within organisations like the BBC that some of them were nurses and so on. So, you know, there may well have been fat cats in there, but to actually have this type of retrospect, you know, and I stick by the word retrospective uh, provision in 2017, and then not even, you know, do enough to warn people it's coming, uh, and then, you know, not, there's been a call, you know, from an all-party parliamentary group with many Conservatives to at least suspend it properly while it's looked at and a proper solution found. And I, I think it is just wrong not to at least do that and, you know, and, and then use that as a basis for moving forward. Thank you. Thank you.